It is so warm. Why am I filming a video? Why, Why am I doing it? It's so warm. Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked, the series where I talk about every single book on my shelf because I finally got all the books on my shelves facing spines outwards and that felt like a cause to celebrate. You may notice I am currently in my new house with my new setup. This is the first full video I'm filming here, hence why there's still some very orange lighting happening. We're not going to worry too much about it. There are some videos that are filmed at the old place that will be coming soon. Don't worry about it too much, just enjoy, forget about consistency. The shelves are the same, that's fine. Anyway, today we're gonna to be talking about Namana Fauna's The Gilded Ones. And I'm gonna put it behind me on this side, which is not something that I typically do. Oh, amazing. Some quick disclaimers before we start. I did buy this copy of this book myself. Nobody's paying me to talk about books. I'm also gonna keep this as spoiler-free as humanly possible, though if you do want to go in knowing absolutely nothing, I suggest pausing the video, going and reading this, and then coming back and telling me what you thought about it. I will also say before we start that if you aren't comfortable reading an incredibly patriarchal society with a lot of general like bullying and abuse towards the main character, it gets quite violent at times, read your own comfort level, but some aspects of this story are quite brutal. I actually read this book for Space Sirens Book Club. It was the book club pick for, I want to say March 2021, I think? But because of who I am as a person, I was not actually there for the live show, but I will link that below if you would like to go and hear what the other space sirens, who are all very incredibly wisdomous and wonderful people, thought about it. This is a YA fantasy book. It came out in February of 2021. I believe it was Namna Fauna's debut. We do actually have a cover for the sequel, which is The Merciless Ones, which is coming out in, I think, I have it written down. April of 2022, so a while to wait, but there is a cover. Namana Fauna is currently based in LA and she has a background in screenwriting. She grew up in Sierra Leone and from about the age of nine split her time between Sierra Leone and the US. I will link her website below if you are wanting to find out any more information about her or her books or everything else she's got going on. This book follows 16 year old Decca who at the start of the book is waiting on the blood ceremony, which will either make her a part of her family and her people forever or prove her to be an outcast. Of course, on the day of the ceremony, her blood runs gold, not red. A fate that means she can either stay in the village and face pretty much certain death, or she can head off with a strange woman who just appeared who wants to make an army of girls just like Decca to fight for the Emperor. Again, no surprises which of those options she plumps for and the story unfolds from there. Looking back on this book, uh, as somebody who read it back in, I want to say in February I read it. No, I must have read it in March. I can't remember. I won't say this is a book that has stuck with me in a lot of ways, but I do have very clear images of certain parts of the story, and I think that's a testament to some of the really good descriptive writing and scene setting that happens in this book. The bits that really stick out for me are the training montage scenes, the training scenes, the combat scenes, those moments, as well as all of the strong women gathering together and doing stuff portions of this book, which are in fairness, very good moments. They're just the bits that have stuck with me the most. I was looking back at my reviews before I made this video and I think that my overwhelming impression was that this is gonna be a really good part of a trilogy when the trilogy is done. And I'm quite excited to read the next one at some point and see how it builds off this first book because there's a lot to set up. There's a lot of character work to be done. There's a lot of world building to be done. And it just means that you don't necessarily get as deep into some of the ideas as you might like. And a lot of things feel like they've happened very fast I suspect because they're not gonna be that important in the grand scheme of the trilogy. I thought that some of the different plot threads and reveals that happened throughout this story were really cleverly put together, and I'm really excited to see how future books do something with those elements. So all of that put together, I think this is a book that's gonna do really well on a reread and will be exceptional as part of a series. I have a lot of faith that if this is your debut, I am excited for what you do next. I found Decca really interesting as a character. I think it's quite easy with this premise to write her off as kind of like just another YA heroine. She does similar things, you know, she has a thing that sets her apart from everyone else. Oh my goodness. But again, I think that's partly first book of a trilogy problems in that we have all of this stuff that needs to get set out and Decca needs to get to a certain point in the story for everything to continue. And I think that with two more books to expand upon her character, we're gonna see some really interesting stuff come out. So I think that her foundations are there and she's not just this completely generic character. We'll see where it goes, but I have faith. I will say I wasn't a huge fan of the romance in this book. It's something that comes up quite often when I read YA. So maybe it's just me being a bit jaded towards this as a thing, but uh, it just felt a little bit tacked on for me. I think again, first book, maybe there wasn't enough time to explore it in its fullness. It's entirely possible that teenage me or even three years ago me would have been swooning the entire time and just, oh my goodness, this is wonderful and beautiful. 26 year old me is, is okay. We don't, we don't know really what teenage Judith would have been doing. I'd have to get a time machine and go back and ask her and try not to judge her outfits too harshly. 
2010s, man. Some comparisons. Um, I do have some and I'm going to pull them down off the shelves because that's a good thing to do now. I have shelves that function. Kingdom of Souls by Rina Baron. This isn't the actual cover. I'll, I'll put what the actual one looks up. This is a, a um, an arc cover. Uh, this is by Rina Baron. I really enjoyed this. This is another YA first book in a series that I really need to reread and I'm very keen to read the sequel. It's on my list to pick up next time I'm in a bookshop. This is West African inspired. For something a little bit different, the Mirage duology by Samaya Dowd is a Moroccan inspired sci-fi duology uh, and it is a great time. I think I have a full review up for this duology so I will link that if I remember. Children of Blood and Bone, this is another art cover, I will put up the actual one, is uh, an obvious comparison but sometimes things are obvious for a reason. This is a, another African inspired fantasy, this is inspired by the mythology of Nigeria and the sequel is very good. I need to read the third one to find out what's happening. Have a review up for this. Would recommend. This was a really strong start to a YA series that I definitely want to read more of. I wouldn't say I'm dashing out to buy a copy of the second one. Like I don't know if I'm gonna keep this on my shelf. I might donate it. I might see if anybody wants it. Just because I don't know how much this is a book that's really for me now where I am at in life. That doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it and I would definitely read more of the series. I think I'm just more likely to get them from my library. It do be like that sometimes. And hey, it's a good opportunity to get some use out of my local library, so I'm here for it. I think that has more to do with my general feelings towards YA at the moment than anything specifically to do with this book. So take that with a pinch of however your feelings are towards YA at the moment. I think if you want to read this, I say go for it. If it were me, I would maybe wait till it's a bit closer to book two being out, just because of... I think it needs book two to really build on it, so... Maybe wait, but also if you want to pick it up now, I'm not going to stop you. Have you read this? Is this on your list to read? Is it something that you would like to pick up? Do you not want to pick it up? Let me know. All of those things down in the comments below. While you're down there, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. I enjoy it greatly. You can also follow me on all of my social media. Come hang out on Discord. We have a good time talking about books and other things. That's all from me, and I will see you in the next one. It's got a piece of bloopers now. Finally got all of my shit. Children of blood. Children of blood. I would potentially, if it were me, maybe wait until we were. I might have a delivery. Let's try and get to the end of the video. And now I need to go lie down in the cold forever. Oh. Blah, blah, blah.